Is this too much? Are we trying too hard? Does this lose my cool, effortless edge? No, this screams cool and effortless. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. How is it going? Hope you're doing really well and happy December. And of course, right on cue, the Christmas cat arrives just in time to bring you extra festive good tidings. Full of good tidings, aren't you? What is a good tiding? I know what a good hiding is, but what's a good tiding, huh? Despite the fact the tree is up and looking lovely over here, despite the fact I've been to a Love Actually themed Christmas choir concert already, despite the fact I've hung mistletoe in the doorway, I'm still not quite feeling the Christmas vibes. Something is missing, and I think maybe I've cracked it with this video today. You might remember recently on my channel, I did a video ranking the books that I encountered as my first experience delving into book talk. I read a whole bunch of what seemed to be the most popular books over on TikTok that I kept getting recommended over and over and over. And I had such a good time making that video. I wanted to do it again, but I thought I would put a little festive twist on things. So this is kind of like the Christmas episode of your favourite TV show. You know like the Christmas episodes of The Office? We'll consider this to be the special Christmas edition of my book videos. I picked up a whole selection of very adorable looking Christmas themed books which I kept getting recommended over on TikTok. These are the ones that keep popping up over and over at the moment for cute little cosy festive reads. And in my heart, I'm feeling like this is gonna be a truly magical reading experience. In my head, I'm sensing maybe not, but there is really only one way to find out whether these are actually gingerbread cookies in book form or whether they're like slightly soggy sprouts that haven't been done in a nice way. You know, like your nan would make. I'm going to be reading nothing but Christmas books to figure out whether these are a ho 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 or a ho ho Oh no. Just to give you a little sample of what we're working with here, we've got The Christmas Wish by Lindsay Kelk. This is the one that actually sparked the idea for this video. I saw this everywhere and I was like, I wouldn't be totally averse to a little Christmas romance. We've got A Merry Little Meat Cute, which with that title, who am I to resist? I was also particularly intrigued by this one because the illustration on the cover of the couple here We've got ourselves a plus size girly. And I made my feelings very clear in my TikTok video how I feel about the constant repetitive dynamic of a giant man falling in love with a tiny woman. Uh, so that was very refreshing to see. This one is looking particularly Christmassy. This is Just Like Magic by Sarah Hogle. We've got One Day in December by Josie Silva. I thought the cover of this was very pretty. Love a bit of foil detailing. I don't know what's actually Christmassy about this one. They probably just meet in December. The other one I've got is a book that I picked up on my Kindle because as soon as I saw it, I was like, I really want to read that. It's by Tessa Bailey and it's called Window Shopping. And she is the author who wrote, it happened one summer, last summer, the one about the sexy fisherman. And the last one is a little bit of a Christmas curveball. One of these is not like the others. This wasn't necessarily something that I was recommended on TikTok, but I felt like if I was, if I was gonna read a load of Christmas books, Surely one of them should probably be A Christmas Carol. And then I saw that there was a Penguin Clothbound classic version of it. And I mean, I was powerless to resist. Hopefully by the end of all of those, I'll be feeling suitably full of romantic, snowy, festive love. This isn't what I thought it was. <laughs> so have you ever needed a lesson in the fact that you should always read the blurb and not just go off a seemingly cute title and cover? Um, this is the perfect example of that. I've literally read half a book of uh, a steamy Christmas romp. <laughs> Why did nobody tell me? And now having since read the blurb, in my defense, it doesn't really give that away. It just says that she's got a secret identity to hide. And I definitely skimmed over that part. I thought this was gonna be the most romantic, wholesome read of my life. This is not what I thought it was going to be. My eyes. I will maybe never recover from the plot twist, from the expectation versus reality of this book. And I will also never again be purchasing gingerbread scented lotion. It's off the list. What I thought was gonna be an adorable hug in a book, a Christmas themed village, was actually over 400 pages of moderately festive, 
pure chaotic energy set against various Christmas themed named locations, but also with a lot of sex toy chat sprinkled on that Yule log there. So where do I possibly begin with this? Okay, this book is about B. Hobbs, that's our main character, also known as Bianca Von Honey, who has a very successful, illustrious career as a plus-sized porn star. And her producer casts her in his latest project, which is a squeaky clean, very clean cut Christmas movie for the Hope Channel. But now that does mean that she is on her mission to keep her normal job a secret from everybody involved in the film and anybody who may possibly watch this film. For maximum chaos, she then discovers that her co-star, her romantic co-star opposite her, is none other than her teen years crush, Nolan Shaw, an ex-boy band member who's in desperate need of some career rehab. And he's promised his manager that this is the start of something new. He's gonna be super duper well behaved, absolutely no scandals whatsoever. That is when the temperature suddenly skyrockets and the snow is melting all around us because Nolan recognises B from her OnlyFans account and he happens to be a huge fan. He's very much like, oh my god, Danny DeVito, I love your work. Three guesses what's gonna happen between these two and if they can't keep off the naughty list, then Christmas is cancelled. So things that I did like about this book. Number one, I'm gonna start with the Christmas themed named locations. I don't know about you, but I always personally really enjoy a book that starts with a map like a reward. We've got the Edelweiss Inn, we've got Kringles, we've got Mistletoe Theatre and a bar called the Dirty Snowball. Like, I'm not being funny, I'd quite like to go there for a long weekend away. There are some funny bits which were a good laugh. Uh, there's some good like sarcasm in here, it's quite like dry humour every now and again which I did enjoy. And I think this book is trying to do good things. Like the use of a plus size leading lady in like a romantic rom com -y tiktok y book like this is very unusual. I enjoyed a couple of moments where Nolan was kind of like appreciating her figure or he was telling her like not to hide her body or anything like that, like that was nice. But as the story went on, and it's a long story, it does go on, there were a lot of references to her size which I just felt were a bit unnecessary. The fact that it has to keep reminding you that that's like a main quality of her kind of takes away from, you know, what it's trying to do. But I did appreciate what it was trying to do. There's some nice diversity in here, there's quite a lot of queer characters in this story which is nice to see. And there's also some mental health chat in here too, albeit a little bit questionable at times, but I feel like the book is trying to do good things which I appreciate. Things I did not like about this book. Number one, the title is very misleading, A Merry Little Meet You. I was expecting people to kind of, you know, bump into each other while Christmas shopping, scatter their gifts everywhere, fall in love over a glance as they pick up various pairs of slippers. And I think maybe my main criticism here is that the cringe factor is high. It, it is very, very high, very cheesy. And don't get me wrong, I need a lot of cheese at Christmas, but normally in the form of a delicious wheel of brie, not necessarily 400 pages of a book. <laughs> I also didn't fancy this man in the slightest, which is very disappointing. Uh, he has his own boy band song as his ringtone, which, excuse me sir, that's a huge red flag. I'm officially giving this, I think, possibly a generous three candy canes out of five candy canes. Although I feel like it's more like two candy canes and maybe a little bit of a third snapped off, like a little sharp sugary weapon. Also, I just have to give a little note to the film that they're making while on set. A bride is sent back in time by a Christmas witch. <laughs> Sorry, it's not a thing. What's a Christmas witch? She meets a Victorian duke. Uh, they fall in love and he teaches her the real meaning of Christmas? Someone call Lindsay Lohan immediately. So this is The Christmas Wish. This is actually the book that I spotted in a bookshop which gave me the idea for this video. So you can thank this one. And I know it probably sounds a little bit weird. I'm sure a lot of you will understand though. Um, she's a British author. So I've got my fingers crossed that the sense of humour for a British reader is going to be a lot more spot on and I'm going to find it probably a bit less cringe. Which I'm really looking forward to because my shoulders were basically permanently attached to my earlobes while I was reading that last little sugar plum fairy of delight. So, will a little Christmas magic mend a broken heart? We can only hope. So 
sorry if it's a little bit dark. I just have to take a moment for how funny this book is. It is so funny. I've literally laughed out loud many times. There was no winning an argument with my sister. Never had been, never would be. The best thing I could do was to leave the room before we ended up wrestling under the kitchen table with me slapping Keris with her own hands, shouting, why are you hitting yourself over and over until mum came to separate us, like last year. A lot of this is honestly right up my street for a sense of humour. I feel like I'm gonna be laughing at this a lot the whole way through. I just have to read this bit to you. This is such a coincidence. I'm actually a little bit weirded out. So much for Christmas turning into a real life Hallmark holiday movie. Where was a down on his luck duke when you needed one? Someone's been reading A Merry Little Me Cute. There's actual tears in my eyes. I've literally just cried reading this book. <laughs> really wasn't expecting the nostalgia feels. The whole bit where they talk about like family members that they miss at Christmas and like they bring out the old home videos and stuff and it's literally just really whacked me in the feels. Your guess is as good as mine why I've decided the floor is the place for this one, but here we are. The Christmas bedding's nicely on show, so that'll do. So I just finished a Christmas wish, the Christmas wish, some kind of Christmas wish. I was, if you hadn't already guessed from the little clips that I filmed, I was completely in love with this book. I love, 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 loved this one. This is the homemade cranberry sauce sausage roll of the Christmas buffet table, which if you know anything about me, uh, is pretty much the highest accolades that I can bestow upon anything. Before I stop weeping over how much I loved and adored reading this book, there was actual weeping involved. Actual tears were cried uh, several times, simply because it is just so lovely and wholesome and perfect. But before I get into why I loved it so much, let me give you a little quick rundown of what this one is all about. So this one is about Gwen. She's basically like classic early 30s. She's slightly baffled by how her life has ended up up as it has, a really painful bad breakup, everything's gone a bit wrong at work and she's just kind of found herself spiralling through life. When she does arrive back home to her mum and dad's for Christmas, she wakes up and discovers that she's stuck in this Christmas Groundhog Day. It's a constant time loop where Christmas Day just keeps repeating itself over and over and over and every time she lives through it she's got to try and figure out how to break this spell. And I think from the cover I expected this to just be like, you know, it's your classic little cute couple illustration here. I think from the cover I just expected this to be the very kind of typical formula that a lot of these TikTok romances kind of follow. I thought I knew exactly what I was reading when I picked this one up, but surprisingly it's actually way more family drama, very very super British family scenario, family time at Christmas. There's much more of a focus on that element of it I would say, um, and kind of like the identity of the main character and how she's kind of rediscovering herself, rather than the romance. I feel like it's kind of misleading to just call this a romance. I feel like the family stuff is actually more of the main chunk of the book. So that took me completely by surprise. I wasn't expecting that at all and I absolutely loved it. I connected with it so quickly, so easily and I just fell head over heels in love with it honestly. It's still such an easy read but so clever in the way that it addresses and gets it so right. That's the clever thing about it. For me anyway, it gets it so right in the way that it explores these like slightly complicated family dynamics and the kind of early 30s mindset and stuff. It just gets it so right that it literally made my heart sing. For me there's just nothing better. I particularly love it when authors slip in these tiny little details. There'll be something that resonates with you and it's so tiny but it's just so perfectly accurate. When that happens you might sort of skim over it and then your eyes go back to it and you're like hang on a second is this about me? Like it's just so painfully accurate and quite masterful in how a little detail can affect you so much. And this book was weirdly full of them for me, like the one that really stands out in my head in particular. I can't even remember what the reference is, but it references like a, f a drawer in the family home and there being a let's diary from the 80s in it. And when I read that I had this really like visceral memory of there always being these like slightly strange let's diaries in loads of drawers at my nan's house <laughs> that made this a particularly 
magical and like weirdly sentimental read for me as well as this nice kind of love story that blossoms throughout as well which is really kind of warm and fuzzy kind of stuff it just feels very real and it's full of love and also most importantly it is very funny i feel like I, i've gone, gone on about how kind of lovely and special it is but it's so funny and it's not the kind of like boss babe super sassy kind of snarky sense of humor that is in a lot of these kind of romance popular romance books um that's kind of a bit like ugh, like it makes your teeth hurt a little bit like it's it's just good real life kind of humor and some of the funny stuff is like pop culture references as well which i often find a little bit like kind of cringy and it kind of pulls me out of the story a bit when that happens but they're so spot on in this one i honestly sitting here i'm like i should probably say some kind of cons to this one couldn't think of a single one it just filled me with total christmas joy from start to finish to be quite honest and i sincerely hope that this gets adapted into a richard curtis film at some point because i honestly feel like this could be the new love actually it is a grand total of five candy canes out of five read them and weep my friends excuse me while i just have a breather because I just completed a marathon. That was an unexpectedly long read. I always vastly overestimate how quickly I can read a book. <laughs> I always think I'm such a faster reader than I actually am. And then my eyeballs can't catch up with my dreams. And it's just a whole thing. Nothing but bitter disappointment and crushed reading goals. I... Mm. <laughs> where, mm, where, where does one begin? I should have known from the blurb. I should have known this probably wasn't one that I was going to fall in love with because it's just one of those things for me. I feel like everyone's got their kind of deal breakers when it comes to books. And for me, as soon as you mention three, three, uh, three damned words in my library of choice are best friend's boyfriend. That's not fun nor romantic that's incredibly sad and a sorry state of affairs for everybody involved but having said that i really did try and give it a fair chance i really really tried to put my like preconceived likes and dislikes to one side and just try and enjoy it for what it is and give it a fair shot just as a a christmas romance a little snow globe of joy but even so i was basically you know that part in the grinch where he's trying on his lederhosen <laughs> and he's like Mm. Ah. Hmm. That's it, I'm not reading anymore. The premise of this at the beginning is actually quite relatable <laughs> because I think all of us around here, I think all of us at some stage, have fallen in love with a stranger on public transport. There's really no love like it. But Laurie spots a boy when she's on the bus and she instantly falls in love with him. <laughs> Which seems a seems a little bold, a little rash, but I'll let her have it. And basically, as time goes on, she's constantly looking for him all over the place, constantly looking over her shoulder in the hopes that she might see the boy from the bus. She's looking in cafes, she's looking in shops all across London. But then, at a party one night, her best mate Sarah giddily introduces Laurie to her new boyfriend. Oh no, it's the boy from the bus classic so that is like the very beginning of the story i think that's probably within the first like 20 pages or so that's really early on um and what follows to warrant quite such a lengthy book is actually a story structure that spans over 10 years it's a really like pretty impressive like mapping of a story across that whole time it covers that kind of love triangle of the three main characters across that whole decade and their journey growing up together and they experience everything that comes with 10 years of growing up you know the journey that their friendship takes through that time all the breakups that come with it and the missed opportunities and the what ifs and those kind of like sliding door moments so i was actually really excited by that premise i thought that was a really impressive like structure of a story i think kind of like being brave enough to carry a reader through that longer time with your characters um is a really impressive piece of story writing so if you are invested in the characters and you really kind of feel a connection to them and you love them and you want to figure out what happens it can be a really like magical reading experience to follow along with that i think but i think for me that was probably the main problem here <laughs> i liked her by the end i feel like she got better as we went along but at the start of this book i really didn't like laurie's character mainly because she just felt like strangely entitled to this man that she saw on a bus once she was like well 
well, he's my true love, so. She does definitely get a lot better as she grows up though, and I found myself, the more I read, the more I did connect with her. My main issue is the character of Jack. Jack is the main kind of like love interest guy in the love triangle, and I got bad vibes from him. Literally, not so much on the bus moment, but from the moment you meet him as a real character, he was a big old red flag to me. He really gave me the ick. He's kind of mean. He's very rude for one thing. And if there's one thing I can't stand <laughs> in a male lead romantic character, it's bad manners. Not to mention the fact he wears some really terrible t-shirts and he also just has no banter whatsoever. Like having just read that last book, which was so funny and the characters had such a kind of realistic, genuine sense of humor, there was a real lack of that. All he ever talked about was how much he loves a pint and how everybody else is silly for drinking anything other than a pint. Like, that's not good banter. That's incredibly boring, sir. And as a couple, I just did not buy their chemistry at all. I didn't even really think they had kind of like the firm, solid foundations of a, even a friendship, really, that I was kind of rooting for. Like, it felt like they were just declaring that they were each other's best friend and there wasn't really any evidence of that. So I think if you did kind of buy into these characters and that romance and you felt a connection there, this would be an amazing, amazing, super enjoyable book and there'd be such a strong connection with those characters. But because I didn't have that with them, it felt like a very, very long read because I didn't believe that love and that romance. I was actually way more invested in the friendship between the two girls. I was into that a lot more than I was kind of like rooting for the romance to go the distance. I did give this three, three candy canes out of five, but it just about scraped that. Maybe they're a little bit sticky, candy canes. There's probably a couple of cat hairs stuck onto a couple of them because it is an enjoyable book and I really admire the writing and the story structure and as a concept I think like missed opportunities of being together and being able to kind of like seize on a love that's meant to be. That kind of repeated missed opportunities thing I think I'm a bit of a sucker for to be honest. So that's the end of that one. Jack ruined it for everyone. Men. <laughs> This is a direct message to Santa. If you're watching, my friend, my lifelong friend, um, please cover your ears. By far and away, without a shadow of a doubt, this book is the single most batshit crazy book I have ever read in my entire life. And I read Bunny last week, so <laughs> I think what I'm realising at this point um, is that the main lesson that I've learned through this treacherous journey through modern day Christmas literature is that there's absolutely no rules. <laughs> this is really the no man's land of the library. If anything, I think the aim of the game is to make it as ridiculous as possible because people have no choice. You must simply suspend all disbelief, believe in all magic, love and Christmas conquers everything. If I could describe this in one word, it would have to be unhinged. I genuinely have no idea what I just read but I'm pretty sure it was a great time. And I guess that's really all that matters in this life. <laughs> this is the story of Betty Hughes, who is an absolutely unbearably annoying uh, social media influencer. Her life is a complete shambles. Um, she's become absolutely broke. Everything around her has completely fallen apart. She's lost every penny to her name. And she's basically got no idea what she's doing with her life. She's faking everything that she says on social media to kind of keep up appearances. And you guessed it. Like in most of these books, she's heading home for Christmas. But the night before she heads back to her grandma's house to see everybody, she accidentally summons the Holiday Spirits. And his name happens to be Holy Day, which I think in an American accent works better because it's like ho Holy Day, Holy Day, Holy Day. Holly, Holly Day, Holly Day. In an English accent, Holly Day, uh, sounds a little bit weird. I actually thought while I was reading this, I might start saying holiday like that all the time. Happy holidays, happy holidays. I really feel like this video is becoming just as unhinged as this book because I'm going slightly insane reading these, I think. <laughs> he can basically grant Betty's wishes in order to make her Christmas extra magical and to try and help her feel the holiday spirit. But because she's so bitter and twisted, she basically just wants to use his magic to get revenge on her enemies. <laughs> 
<laughs> which, which is an absolute vibe, let's be honest. And of course the twist on this whole thing is that Hall happens to be absolutely super gorgeously handsome and adorable and lovely and kind. He is, I think, an undeniably lovable character. I did really like him, but he does, he's basically like a, a mirror copy of Buddy the Elf. Like every line that he spoke I could imagine it being a line straight from Elf. So I think you can probably guess where that little duo is going. I'm sure she'll be feeling that holiday spirit. Am I right, ladies? I think the reason that I have struggled to figure out how I feel about this book um, is that some bits of it were really good. There's some parts that are genuinely very funny. Um, and there's some romantic moments in there which are really lovely and cozy and genuinely gave me like full Christmas feels. But weirdly, other parts of this story are absolutely mental. Absolutely mental. I don't know where they've come from. There's just a lot of scenes that feel so random and unnecessary. It feels like it needs re-editing. Like there's one part where a couple of characters have a duel. Not to mention there is also so many characters that I found myself getting all the names very, very mixed up. And the writing style itself was a very mixed bag for me because as I said, at, at times I found it very funny and very cute and very spot on. And then other moments, I would have to go back and read the same chunk of sentences like three or four times. I just don't know how to describe it other than maybe zany. I don't think I've ever used that word before in my life, but, but maybe this is just a little too zany. Having said all that, there was just something about this one that I had a little bit of a soft spot for. I really did actually really like the two main characters. She starts off very like mean and nasty in the first half and I wasn't really convinced that I wanted them to be together and actually by the end I really really loved them as a couple together so that was quite quite nice character development. And if you are tuning into this video to get some Christmas vibes and Christmas vibes only if that is your main point of interest here for the maximum cozy Christmas feels this is the one for you. It is layered on thick my friends. It is brandy clotted cream layered on thick on top of a mince pie levels of thickness. <laughs> it's certainly not subtle, it's very very kitschy and, and quite like sugary sweet levels of Christmas setting and description which I actually quite like. That's kind of what I signed up for here. Some of them have steered me in a very different path. But honestly the main takeaway from this is that it is absolutely hand on heart, completely and utterly crazy. Um, it gets three candy canes out of five for just being such a little weirdo. Please excuse the slightly frazzled half on, half off, smudged off my entire face makeup. Um, I've stayed up really late to finish this tonight <laughs> because I think more than anything this has been more of a social experiment to see how one woman fares reading nothing but Christmas romance. To get visions of sugar plum fairies, I'm seeing visions of slightly problematic hunky men in Christmas bow ties, which I'll explain now. Well, 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 uh, this is Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. I'm gonna pop a little picture, this one was on my Kindle, so I'll pop a little cover picture right here so that we try and remember what I'm talking about. Uh, Cause I'm struggling. <laughs> over and over I kept like, you know, shake yourself down, let's go again, little break, come back to it. I really tried. I just had too many problems with this one. So the story is set two weeks before Christmas, I think, and our main character Stella is standing outside Vivant department store. This strange man named Aiden just casually sidles up to her while she's gazing through the windows and asks what she thinks about the displays that they've currently got there. She basically tells him that it's a tragic state of affairs and that she absolutely hates it. And he very obviously instantly falls in love with her. <laughs> I mean, whatever floats your boat, mate. Um, and he encourages her to, to tell her that she should apply to the job that's currently running at the department store for a new window display person to come in and give it a big old makeover. It's basically like her dream job, it's what she's been working towards. Um, and then it turns out that he's actually the owner of the department store and now she's working for him. She's trying to ignore the fact that he's you know, damn gorgeous as these characters tend to be. She's trying to ignore the fact that she's definitely falling head over heels in love with him. And alongside that, she's also kind of wrestling with her very difficult past and she's trying to make the best of a situation that she's found herself in. And she's trying to grab the opportunity with both hands rather than grabbing anything else with both hands. There's a lot of detail about this man's bubble butt. I am slightly struggling to remember what the actual 
what actually happened in this book. Windows? Similar to the other Tessa Bailey book that I read, I suspected this one would probably be the same. It's a spicy little read. If you came here for a spicy Christmas, <laughs> it's gonna be right up your street. And I also think as well, I want to take a moment for this, to stand up for the character, Stella. Um, I think this whole, this book is kind of framed as like your classic grumpy person versus ray of sunshine person falling in love with each other. I think a lot of us love that particular trope, that particular dynamic in a romance story is very, very popular. Um, and that's kind of what I signed up for. That's kind of what I'd seen about the book. But I actually think Stella's got a bit of an unfair rap here. I, if you ask me, she's not actually grumpy. The character has just spent four years in prison and has literally just got out of prison. And I think rather than just being grumpy, she's basically just feeling slightly awkward about this new job scenario. She's kind of a bit confused about how to find her feet again. She's very shy. So I actually feel it's really unfair to label her as like the grumpy half of the relationship. Um, and I actually think Aiden, the kind of romantic interest here, is actually quite unfair. I actually think he doesn't really respect the situation that she's found herself in. I feel like he kind of washes over uh, the gravitas of her like trying to rebuild her life. I think he needs to take a bit of a step back and let her find her feet again. Like, slow down my man. Give her a moment to breathe. Having said all that, I do think maybe I am overthinking this slightly short rom-com. <laughs> kind of felt the chemistry a little bit and it's, it's very much like an insta-love thing. Like it's very much like first sight, madly in love, bish bash bosh. So if you like a slow burn, <laughs> if you like a tantalizing slow burn, this is certainly not the one for you, my friend. Uh, it's actually a very short book anyway, so there's not really room for that. But I really, I just, I didn't really like the way that Aiden had effectively hired Stella into a job because he really fancied her and he wanted to see her again. The ethics are questionable. Basically gives this woman a job to make sure that he can see her again so that uh, somewhere down the line he can get in her pants. It's a red flag. It's a red flag as red as Father Christmas's suit. And like reading through this story that in the back of my mind the whole time I was like, why would you not write it in a slightly kind of less predatory way in that like he could have hired her because he spotted her talent somehow. And then there's like a, a bit more of a slow burn romance between the two of them. Or it could still be insta love, I guess, but it would give her talent a bit more merit if she got the job because she was talented. Because, you know, obviously the window displays that she makes later in the book, I'm definitely overthinking this. She's obviously very talented. It sounds like her window displays are great. I don't know, there's, there's something about the power dynamic in the way that he hired her just made me feel a bit icky. There's one major concern as well that I had <laughs> throughout all of this and it revolves around the man's bow ties. He's supposed to be this like super sexy, incredibly handsome, irresistible guy and every day he comes into work wearing a different novelty bow tie. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. My final parting note for window shopping. Um, I think I do just need to put a slight warning in here for one particular moment, which I think will scar me probably for the, for the rest of my days, actually. He does at one point compare the speed in which he's aroused um, to the speed of thickening gravy on a high heat. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you what to think about that. Do with that what you will. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. I'm out. I'm out. It's two candy canes and not a penny more. Bar humbug. sit in front of the tree for this final one, didn't I? Let's be honest. I'm actually sitting on top of a present, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I've also just had to mute the snowman to film this. So that's the ultimate Christmas combination right there. So A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I have never read this before. I like to try and pick up a classic every so often, so I decided this could be my quota for Q4. But you know what? I absolutely loved reading this. It was such a... I feel like the word pleasant is very like bleh. But it was genuinely such a pleasant couple of hours to just curl up on the sofa with the cat and a blanket in front of the Christmas tree 
and read a Christmas Carol. I feel like that's, you know, that's something straight out of a cheesy Netflix film. Maybe I'm entering into my own Christmas story right now. We've come full circle and my own Christmas romance is about to begin. I do hope it doesn't start with the ghost of Jacob Marley though, because that's much scarier in the book than it is with two Muppets popping up going, we're Marley and Marley, whoa. This is much scarier. His jaw literally falls off. So yeah, this was a truly delightful reading experience. I can even barely remember the strip clubs called the North Pole and all the various other lovely things we've had, thickening gravy penis metaphors. Thank you, Charles Dickens, for washing out my brain with soap. I think we can probably all agree around here. Even if you pretend to love reading every classic you've ever read, sometimes picking up a classic is a slog. But this was a, a very like lovely, surprisingly, I don't want to say easy because reading anything in slightly older style writing is always a little bit of a challenge for your brain. So I don't want to say easy, but it's definitely one of the most accessible classics I've ever read, maybe because it is such a familiar story anyway. It's super wholesome and it really has. The others didn't do a whole lot for giving me the Christmas feels. A couple of them actually, a couple of them did a good job, but this one is probably the one that's given me the most kind of wholesome atmosphere of that cozy traditional Christmas. So it turns out you shouldn't mess with the best of them. <laughs> Even after all this time, this is probably the most festive of them all. <laughs> so turns out Charles Dickens was actually quite good. They just don't write them like that anymore. You know, they just don't make them like that anymore. I was gonna kind of run through what happens in this story. If you don't know what happens in this story, then A, please watch The Muppets Christmas Carol. It'll be a real learning experience and arguably a divine experience for you. But B, it's all about Ebenezer Scrooge. It's literally split into just five chapters. Um, and it's basically starts with Scrooge being like, oh, Christmas is the worst. And then the ghosts come and they're like, no, actually, you're the worst. And then he's like, ah, oh, Christmas is pretty good. I actually found it very interesting to read it firsthand rather than a different kind of adaptation. I've seen so many of them, you know, since very, very early childhood. I feel like it's such an integral part of British Christmas. But there is some really funny lines in this, a particularly great one about grave and gravy, really enjoyed that. Um, the characters really come to life and I promise that, that was an unintentional ghost pun. But honestly, it genuinely just does feel like the epitome of Christmas to me. <laughs> like this is Christmas, probably because it's so familiar. We've all grown up with it and it felt a little bit, it felt like reading a book that I've read before, even though I haven't read it on paper. It felt like, you know, going back to an old friend kind of thing, which is what Christmas is all about, I guess. That was cheesy. I feel like this is actually probably gonna become like a tradition for me now, like sitting there next to the tree with the cat, reading this, like it just felt like it needed to be a new like Christmas Eve tradition. I was really like living my main character, romanticizing my life kind of moment. I highly recommend. <laughs> I will say I did miss such classic lines as, no cheeses for us Mises. And my first job was here, old Fuzzy Wigs rubber chicken factory. <laughs> It's really not the same without them. Charles Dickens shouldn't have edited those ones out. So I love ending on a high note. This receives a full five candy canes out of five. So there we have it. We have officially reached the end of my Christmas special. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Sometimes Christmas specials are not great. I hope this was one of the better ones. Okay, I think I've cracked it. This is my official ranking. I hope none of those presents are delicate. <laughs> It's my official ranking of Christmas books. Imagine window shopping on my Kindle on the bottom there. We did it. Thank you guys so much for watching. In fact, thank you for watching all year. I can't tell you how much it means to me that some of you stick around. And uh, that's another year of friendship for us. What a beautiful thing. I hope you have the most amazing Christmas or festive season, holiday period. I hope you have the best time. Stay warm, stay cozy, stay full of good food. I will see you very soon with another video. My face is hurting from smiling. <laughs> Happy Christmas.